my all-time favorite note-taking app, meaning an app that allows me to edit and use my digital planner on iPad, has always been GoodNotes. This is due to the fact of how simple the app is to use. All of the tools are readily available, the pages load quickly, and navigation is smooth. Hi, my name is Isa, and today I will teach you the basics of how to use the note-taking app GoodNotes for digital planning on iPad. GoodNotes is available to download from the App Store. You can download it for free, but you will have a limit of three files. If you plan to use a digital planner here, that will count as one file. You may also create a document within the app, and this also counts as one file. So when I open the app, this is the first thing I'll see. This is my library. Mine is already filled with a bunch of documents, but it will be empty in the beginning. Let's create a new folder. Tap on the plus sign here where it says new and click on folder. Write in a title and you can select a color and icon for this folder. Click on done. You have created your very first folder. By using folders, you will be able to keep all your notes, planners, sticker books and any other document organized. Now let's add a new planner. I will tap on the plus sign here where it says new and I will click on import. I have downloaded my planner from the website so it is already saved to my downloads folder. I will navigate to my downloads folder on this window to locate my planner. Here it is. I will tap on it to select and you'll notice that you could tap to select multiple files to import them all at once. Now click on open. That has installed your planner in GoodNotes. Another very easy way to import a planner is to enter Split View, having the Files app or whatever you have your planner saved onto one side and GoodNotes on the other. Locate the planner and just tap to drag it into the GoodNotes home library. That's it. Now that my planner is here, we can begin learning the tools. To activate the toolbar, I will tap on this pen icon at the top here. This will make the toolbar available for me. But if I want to navigate the pages of my digital planner by tapping on the tabs or buttons, I actually need to have this toolbar hidden. So I can tap on this pen icon again to hide the toolbar and enter read only mode. And this will allow me to tap on the different buttons of my planner to go to the different pages. Now let's explore the tools. This first icon is the pen tool. Use this to write as you would with a regular pen on paper. When you tap on the icon twice, you'll notice that this menu opens with some options. You have different types of pens that you can try out. I personally always use the ball pen because I like the consistency of the strokes, and I've found that this is the pen that makes the file the least heavy. Other pen types might develop a lag when loading pages. You can have multiple widths and colors of pen saved up here. To change the size of the stroke, tap on one of these lines here and adjust as desired. You can also have a dashed or a dotted stroke. To change the color, tap on any of these circles on here. You can select a custom color, enter a hex code on this text box here, or even use the color picker to choose a specific color from the current page. This is especially helpful if you need to modify the original pages in your planner or if you just want to match the colors in your spread. To save a color, just tap on where it says Add to Presets, and the color will be added to this section here. Use the pen to quickly date your planner, draw on or decorate photos, create an outline for a sticker, and of course, write in all of your notes. The next tool is the eraser. You can also tap on its icon to load its menu. Here, you'll see that you have three different eraser sizes and you have three types of eraser. Precision eraser will delete pixel by pixel, so you can precisely delete only what you need. An example of how I use this option is when I want to make my round highlighter strokes flat to fit my boxes better. The standard eraser will delete by chunks, it takes out multiple pixels at once. Stroke eraser will delete a full stroke by just touching it. This is the option I usually keep active as it can be really helpful to quickly get rid of what you don't need but just be mindful that it deletes things very quickly. If you ever make a mistake, no worries. Just tap on this arrow to go back a step, like bringing back a stroke. If you change your mind, you can tap on the forward arrow and that will go forward one step. You can apply these same actions using finger gestures. Tap on the screen twice quickly with two fingers to undo the last step. And tapping on the screen twice with three fingers will redo the last step. Next tool is the highlighter. It's just like a thick marker stroke with transparency. You can use it the same way as you would use a real highlighter on paper to highlight chunks of text. But you can also get creative and highlight a word or image to create a cute sticker effect. The highlighter has its own color and size menu just like the pen tool. 
following tool is the tape. This was created with the intention to hide text on your pages that you can quickly uncover by just tapping on the stroke you created. This may be especially useful when you want to show pages from your planner to others, but you need to hide sensitive info. Simply draw over what you want to keep covered, and when you are done taking photos or filming your page, tap on the strokes to remove them. For the tape, you can choose size and color, and the selected options will also stay saved up here. The next icon is the shape tool. What this tool does is help you draw perfect shapes. So if you kind of draw a rectangle, having this tool selected will turn it into a perfect one. Whatever settings you have selected for the pen tool will also be active when you have this icon selected. I feel like this tool is a bit redundant now since you can also snap into shape using the regular pen tool and even the highlighter tool. But I do find it very helpful to use this shape tool to go back to a perfect stroke I created to modify it. Like here. I can resize my box. It will also help me snap a shape to another so I can build something like this. Another feature of the shape tool is that if you turn this menu option on, whatever shape you create will have a transparent fill. After creating the shape, tap on the back arrow to get rid of the outline and only keep the transparent shape. You have created your very own transparent sticker. The next tool is probably the one I use the most, the lasso. This is the one that will help me select and arrange any element in my planner. You have two types of lasso, freeform, which is this icon here, and rectangle. Rectangle works best for when you want to quickly select multiple items or everything on a page at once, and freeform is better to select only certain items from within a group. Once you have selected an item with the lasso, you can tap on that selection to cut or copy, and paste somewhere else. Delete, duplicate the item, change the position of the item's layer, bringing it under or above another element, resize, change the color, or turn it into an element and save it to your library for future use. The lasso can select different types of items, and that becomes incredibly helpful when you start filling up your pages. For example here, the numbers on my month are text boxes, and my notes have been created with the pen tool. I want to change all the colors of my dates without also changing the color of my notes. So I go into my lasso menu and deselect handwriting so the lasso will select the text boxes only. Or if I want to only move my stickers around, then I'll go and deselect handwriting and text boxes so I can freely reorganize my stickers. The following icon is elements. This is a library where you can save different types of elements, basically stickers, images, or even sets of items that you create yourself, like this editable sticker I have put together with the pen tool, a text box, and highlighter. To save something from your page as an element, simply select it with the lasso tool. Tap on the selection and click on Add Element. Choose an existing collection or create a new one. If you tap here, elements will open in split view so you can take a better look and you can drag any item you want onto your page. If you want to import stickers, say, from a sticker book you purchased, tap on this plus icon to create a new collection. Click on where it says Import From and locate the folder where you have your stickers, which will probably be in the download section. Select the desired item and import. An easier way to import a bunch of items at once is to enter split view with the files app or whatever you have your stickers saved. Tap here to select multiple items and drag them all onto your new collection. This drops them all off at once. When you are done adding elements to your collection, click on create. Now I can go to any page and load my elements whenever I need them. To delete a collection you no longer want, enter split view. Open that collection, tap on the pen icon to edit, now click on these three dots on the top right and select delete collection. The following icon is a shortcut to your photos saved in camera roll. Anything you have in the gallery will show up here. Tap to select any photo to load it onto your page. I don't recommend saving stickers as photos because the Camera Roll app eventually adds a white background to transparent images, which makes them unusable. 
The next icon is the text tool. This will allow you to create text boxes. This is another tool that you will probably be using a lot. Once you have the text box selected, tap anywhere on the page to create a new text box and start typing. You can also use the Apple Pencil to scribble and write in this way instead. Your handwriting will automatically turn into typed text. If you don't have this option available, go to Settings, find Apple Pencil and turn it on. Text boxes help your notes look uniform and organized. I also like creating text boxes to date my planner. The text boxes remain editable so I can quickly grab them with my lasso and change their color, for example. If there is a text style you like, you can save it by tapping on this icon and tap on Save as Default. That same font and size will show up on any future text boxes that I create. You can change the font by tapping here and selecting a different one. And you can also change the size with this slider here. If this happens to you, you need to pull this little blue dot to grow the text box to fit the word. You can also reposition the text box by tapping and dragging on these three lines at the top. The next option here will align the text as desired. And it can also help you adjust the spacing in between lines. This is especially useful when you want your text box to fit the lines of a specific section in your planner or notebook. You have your color palette here. And this other option here lets you completely style the text box. I love this option because you can basically create your own stickers. Take some time to play around and find what you like. If you want to quickly delete everything that you have on a page, head to the three dots at the top right corner and select Clear Page. If you do this by accident, no worries. Just tap on the back arrow and you'll recover all of the data on the page. On this same menu, you will see this option that says Move Page to Trash. I strongly suggest that you do not use this option. If there is a page in your planner you don't find useful at the moment, you can just leave it alone. If you delete it, the link that originally took you to that page will become broken and will no longer work. If you accidentally deleted a whole page, you can find it in the trash, which is located at the settings menu back at the library. You can locate the deleted page here, select it, and tap on recover. This may recover the page, place it in the correct position in your planner, and restore the link. Please be aware this method does not always work, and in some cases it will be necessary to start with a fresh copy of a planner in order to restore a deleted link or page. Going back to the toolbar, this next icon here helps you write better by zooming into the page a lot, which gives you more control when writing. You can adjust the section you are viewing by pulling this bottom right corner, and you can move the window around the different sections of the page using your finger or by using these controls here. The following tool is a ruler that will float on your screen to allow you to draw straight lines at a particular angle. You will see the angle show up here, and you can then draw a line using the pen, highlighter, or tape, and the line will stick to that angle. Tap on the ruler icon again to hide it. This next icon is a little laser light or pointer, useful if you want to show or point at specific parts of the document during a presentation. Now, there's also a timer function in GoodNotes. Tap here to open it, and here you can select how long you want the timer to run for. Once the timer is running, you can tap here to pause it, you can also hide the progress bar, and tap on the timer icon to show it again. You can end the timer at any time, and you'll see the previous time sessions under History. You can also customize specific timers by selecting a name, icon, and duration. Tap on Save, and next time you want to use it, just go to My Modes, select it, and tap on Start. You can also use the timer tool as a stopwatch, to simply start and pause or stop it whenever you want. Perfect to track how long you spend working or studying. This icon at the top here next to the pen is for when you want to write as a whole page. Think of a traditional text editor. This option doesn't work while I'm using my digital planner, since my document has buttons and other elements that don't allow me to use the full width of the space to write. This microphone button lets me start a voice recording. It's a single recording per file, so anytime you turn it on, the audio will be added to the same track. Listen to it by tapping here. The magnifying glass lets you search for words within the same document or digital planner. 
If you want to search in a different place or for a different document altogether, head back to Home and use this search option instead. Now, let's learn how to manage pages. If there is a page in your planner that you want to use more than once, all you have to do is navigate to that page, tap on your miniatures view, tap on the little arrow under that page and click on Duplicate. You may also click on Edit, select the page or pages you want to copy, click on Copy, Done. Now, head to a different position in the planner, tap on the bottom arrow again and select Add Page After. Paste pages. That will bring the copied pages to this new location. I can keep clicking here as long as the pages are copied to create multiple pages faster. You may also tap and drag on any of these miniatures to change its location. The miniatures view can be opened as a sidebar or as a floating window. You can view two of the same or different documents at once by entering Split View. To do that, simply grab a page from your miniatures and drag it onto one side of the screen. Both sides will be fully functional and whatever you do on one will immediately be reflected on the other if this is the same document you are editing. To use two different files, head back to your library or home and drag a whole document to the side. Now I am using two totally separate files at the same time. Lastly, I want to show you how you can export your planner. I like doing this to archive any old planners that I no longer need, but I don't want to delete. Having the document open, tap on the share icon at the top right here and select export all. You can save as a PDF, which will make it easier to view and manage the document since it can be opened with multiple apps, but it will no longer be editable. Or you can export as a GoodNotes file, which will allow you to continue to edit this planner in the future if you need to. Whatever option you choose, make sure you have these two first options turned on. Then click on Export. From here, you can save to files or export to whatever you'd like. I think that covers most of the basics and the tools that you need in order to have a smooth digital planning experience in GoodNotes. I upload Plan With Me videos from time to time where I share special tips and tricks that I use for my own digital planning. Make sure to be subscribed to my channel and click on the bell to turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of those. I really hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!